Hi chemists. Welcome to your choice on your unit menu, ionic compounds. In this video, we will focus on how to name and formulate for binary ionic compounds. Make sure you have your periodic table handy and also make sure you're jotting down some notes as you watch this video. That way you have a much easier time as you practice. After this video, you should be able to write chemical formulas and names for binary ionic compounds. Formula writing for these compounds is pretty simple. Because all compounds are neutral, what you need to do is figure out how many of each ion is needed to make the compound have a net zero charge. So for example, if I wanted to combine magnesium and chlorine together, instead of doing the arrow pushing and those electron dot structures, what all I would have to do is really just write out the charges of each of these individual ions. So magnesium is going to be two plus and chloride is going to be one minus. If you added these charges together, it does not give you a net zero charge. So what you need to do is add another chloride ion. When you add the chloride ion, you now have a net charge of plus two and a net charge of minus two. That will give you a neutral compound. And so when you write the formula, you're going to have one magnesium and then two chloride ions. So you're gonna write MgCl2. Notice that in a formula, because the formula is neutral, you do not actually put the charges in there. So there's nothing actually written in here. If we were to do this for aluminum and oxygen, again, we'll look up those charges. In order to make this compound be neutral, we have to think to ourselves, what's a number that three and two can go into evenly? And hopefully you're saying six. So we'll have to have a total of two aluminums and three oxides. And when you write the formula, make sure you take into account that there are two aluminums and there are three oxygens. So it'll be Al2O3. So I am going to be giving you some extra practice with this. However, I'm not going to give it to you as if, you know, combining these two things together. I'm not going to say combine these two things together. Instead, I'm going to give you the chemical name. So in this case, you have calcium bromide, but you handle it the exact same way as we did before. So obviously calcium bromide is made up of both calcium and bromine. So you would look up the charge for calcium and the charge for bromine. And then you would see calcium is two plus, bromine is one minus. You would need another bromine, and so then your formula would be CABR2. Here's another example, so silver sulfide. If you're looking at the silver atom on your periodic table, you're probably saying, I really don't know what the charge is. And that is true. It's hard to know what the charges are in the transition metals because really they have different charges and some have more than one. So that's where you're actually going to be labeling on your periodic table the charges. So this will come next on your unit menu. But um, for right now, just trust me in that um, silver actually has a one plus charge. And eventually, like I said, you'll be able to write this on your periodic table to make it easier. So when you go ahead and do this, that means silver is one plus. And so when you combine these two together, you'll have to have another silver ion. And so it'll be AG2S. So again, you still handle it the same way. Just be a little careful if you have any transition metals, you'll have to put the charges in there. Here's another example. So you've got nickel to fluoride. So the two that you see in the middle there is a Roman numeral. And so with this, you're probably saying, oh, I don't know what this means. Well, if you look where nickel is on your periodic table, you'll also see that it's in the transition metal section. So this is another one that you really don't know what the charge is. Um, but fortunately, the two as the Roman numeral will tell you the charge and it will always be positive because, right, it's a metal. And so the nice thing about this is that you would just have to write nickel with a two plus, and then you'll have to add another fluoride ion, and it'll be NIF2. So whenever you have a Roman numeral, that makes it really easy in order to um, write what the charge is going to be. You may say, Ms. Raz, why do you need a Roman numeral? Well, that's something that we're going to talk a little bit about later. But basically, um, there are some elements that depending on what they're combining with and under what conditions they combine with, they could have more than one possible charge. And so nickel in particular could be nickel two with a plus two charge, or it could be nickel three with a plus three charge. And so that's why we need to have the Roman numeral. 
Here's another one. So this is iron three chloride. So iron's another one located in the transition metal section that has more than one possible charge. So you could actually have iron two or iron three, but since this is iron three, what that's telling you is that it's going to be iron with a three plus charge. And again, you'll need three chloride ions here in order to balance that three plus charge. So it'll be FeCl3. So we spend time writing formulas. Now we're gonna go the opposite direction and write the names. So remember, whenever we're writing a chemical name, the chemical name is always gonna take the form of having the metal first and the non-metal second. So for example, if you had something like KBr, the first thing that you see is potassium. So you're just gonna name it as potassium. But Br is not bromine. Remember, it's in a compound, it has to be bromide. So KBr is called potassium bromide. You will have to attach the ending of IDE onto any nonmetals. For the second one, you can name it just like you see there. That's calcium, and then the I is iodide. So it would be calcium iodide. And then finally, we have sodium, and then we have the S there, which is sulfur. But again, when you combine them together, it's going to be sodium sulfide. So I hope this video helped you learn how to name and formula right for binary ionic compounds. As usual, you know what's up next. You're going to have to label your periodic table with those charges and then have some practice. Thanks so much for watching.